Welcome back, Larry. Dale, how are you? Good. Uh, I know you're okay because you were uh, very constructive the market, uh, you know, the previous two times I've talked to you. So, and, uh, you know, I know you uh, 50 day moving and um, let's take a look and give you a victory lap from your last interview, Larry, if you know how to share the screen again, we could do that. That's a green share button. Let's see if I, I think I've got you here. Let's see. Yeah, you got, uh, it. You got are it. Are you there? Got it. So we're looking Perfect. at Freeport. Okay. So uh, tell us how you were, you know, I, I talk about this, Larry, and uh, I can tell just from having talked to you a few times that it's uh, one thing to make a good forecast. That's just being an analyst, right? Right. And then you go another degree of difficulty, and that's to put on the trade or the position because that's different because now you have the emotion of risk, financial risk in the equation. And the toughest thing to do is, uh, in my opinion, and for me, maybe that's why I think it's tough because it's tough for me, is a great hold, is having the patience um, and the discipline to ride a move uh, that you probably thought was, uh, you know, once in the last month or so with us making new highs, started to look stretched by any measurement. So um, nice hold, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Now to get started, so um, let me start somewhere else then because Freeport, so I've just started to move in myself to the cyclical. So the last time we spoke in June, I had started to put cyclicals on the buy list and I had the metals and mining ETF, XME, which has uh, Freeport and all of those uh, basic materials and metal stocks. But I've, yeah. I've still been pretty much positioned heavily more into tech. So right. NVIDIA, Microsoft, things like that. But I started to, to rotate more uh, into the industrials and uh, the industrial metals. And that's where I think from a risk reward perspective, I think probably the the best potential reward versus risk is in the industrial metals. But if we just want to touch base, like you said, on a couple ideas. So NVIDIA, so NVIDIA is probably my uh, NVIDIA and Square are my two top open positions in tech right now. And these, I mean, just talking about the 50 day moving average. So yeah. NVIDIA, I got into NVIDIA right here. I don't know if you can see on the chart. Yeah, uh, the your middle cursor of, shows. Yeah, middle of April at 280. And this has just been a straight run. Hasn't I don't even think it's closed below the 20-day moving average now that I take a look at it. So NVIDIA has been a, a very strong run. Uh, Square has been a, a, a super strong run. So this is my top open position right now. And, and what I've done with these stocks, so I have scaled out. So on Square and NVIDIA and Microsoft and these tech stocks. So I've scaled out of some of the positions, uh, you know, maybe 20 or 30% on the way up. But even if you look at Square, it, it hasn't had one close below the 20 days. So really what I'm looking at with these names, as long as, from my time perspective, as long as they stay over this 50 day moving average, then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let them go where they go. Okay. Yeah, so uh, do you do anything with like notice on CNBC? Um, she's not an analyst. She's an anchor, Kelly. I forgot Kelly's last name, but she's starting to do a feature of showing stocks, how far above the 50-day moving average they are. And uh, I think she's using it as, you know, showing how, uh, you know, how strong and how, things that are priced, a lot of things priced for perfection by being uh, that much, whether it's 20%, 30% above the 50-day moving average. Are you getting any inklings that we're getting close to where the 50s on a lot of these issues could be tested? You know, I, I don't Again? look at that. I, I, I don't look at it, and I'll tell you why. What, what I found over the years is – Anytime I start to look at <clears throat> these statistics, okay. like, you know, what she's talking about, percent over yeah. the 50 day or something, what, what it tended to do was it, it would make me hesitate on just trading the chart. So if I got a breakout signal, but then I look at, at something else and it says, well, okay. you know, stocks are, 
So I just don't look at that stuff. Here's what I do know. At the end, I'm, I'm going to be along at the top. I'm not going to get out at the top. And I'm going to give some back at the end. But, but by just waiting until it actually breaks down, I'm okay. Even if I give back, you know, it could be 10 or 15 or 20 percent. But if I've got to give back, you know, 10 to 20 percent, but I catch the 100 percent move here. So I will at the end, I might scale some out along the way. But unless this just has a, a parabolic, you know, just a giant gap higher where, you know, where I take some more off right. the table. But, you know, so I don't I don't look at that too much. Let me ask you this. And what's your sell discipline? Is it closing under the 20 or do you have to wait for it to close? And I'm just assuming that if we start taking out the 50, uh, you don't want to be long. Right. In in these in these longer term positions, basically, I've got my stops uh, underneath the rising 50 day moving average. So if, if they start to test down there, then then I'll be out. OK, now in the shorter term positions and I don't I don't have too many shorter term positions right now in a, in a choppy market, I'll tend to take some shorter term, you know, swing trades primarily in ETFs. And then my stops are a lot tighter. But when we get into a market like this, where it's a pretty strong trend, then I don't want to over trade it. And then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll run the stops a little bit wider. OK. All right. So uh, you it sounded like you're uh, making a switch from growth to value. Is that what I was hearing with uh, the industrials? Uh, yes. Uh, it's a rotation into the old economy, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, and and I'm rotating and I'm not. I'm not cleaning house, so I'm still, I've got Tesla, I've got Amazon, I, you know, I've got all the traditional uh, higher momentum growth stocks, but I am so a position at a time. So I, I rotated out of a couple cloud software stocks. So I had a lot in cloud. I had about five cloud positions. So I rotated out of a couple of those and I've moved into Alcoa. So Alcoa is a position that I just took this week. And, and this is a, a pretty clean chart. If you take a look at Alcoa, it's got a nice yeah. intermediate term uptrend, cleared the 200 day moving average, but it had a, a consolidate down here, consolidation breakout, consolidate breakout. So over the 200 day moving average, this is for me. So that's when really, you got long. That's where you got long over the 200, right? No, I just got long. What day is today? Oh, Thursday. I, I got long on Tuesday. So I got okay. long this red bar right okay. here. So this is a new position for me. Yeah. Caterpillar uh, is an industrial that I've got. So I took Caterpillar. Yeah, I just want to take it back so we have a teaching moment here. Can you go sure. back to that chart? Okay, so uh, looking at Alcoa, mm -hmm. and uh, here's the psychology of, you know, I, I could hear it in my head. So I'm sure a lot of people hear it in their head. Uh, they look at where Alcoa was in March and April and May and June. And, you know, you're looking at a triple in price. Right. And um, a lot of people will go, well, I can't buy it after it tripled. Tell people why you can, that the price doesn't matter. Well, let's take that a look at where it was. Tripled. Yeah. So now if we took, take a look at where it was uh, two years ago, it was $62. Right. So we can look at it. it. It is a triple off the low. But what I'm looking at is if I take a position today, what's my expected return from right here? So let's call it I, I bought it at 1477. So if this stock, you know, goes to 21, which isn't too far, too far up the chart, it takes you back to February. That's a 50 percent move from here. So what I'm looking at is if I've got cash today. Where is the highest potential? It, it doesn't matter to me where it was. You know, it, it's tripled. Right. I wasn't there. But if I can get from here and get 30, 40, 50 percent on my money from here, that's all that matters to me now. Not, you know, not what happened yesterday. Oh, why wasn't I buying it at seven or eight? And, uh, you know. It, yeah, but keep yeah. in mind, when it when it was seven and eight, I was buying square, which is double. Yeah. You know, I was buying NVIDIA, which is up 70 percent. So, yeah. you know, in, in hindsight, everything makes sense. But all I'm looking at is is right now. I've now got is money. a key word. Yeah, I've got money to put to work today. Where do I see the best potential 
reward for my risk. And it, it's, you know, this is one of my names. Yeah, I, I think that's a, uh, something that uh, bears are finally starting to learn is that money's not leaving the market. It's just rotating. Mm -hmm. And the rotation, you know, when we had that softness in some of the um, fang names before we had all those great earnings, people were saying, well, the market, you know, if uh, fang gets in trouble, the market's in trouble. But then there was something else to pick it up. We had a little rise in yields and you know, the cyclicals came back. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, just because a sector you could have a, a strong bull market and have a few sectors um, not participate or even be in bear trends. You know what I'm interested in here? Because I know you you mentioned it at the beginning of the interview. Um, sure. Uh, mining and manufacturing when you were showing Freeport. And I think last time you had some exposure to the gold miners too, didn't yeah. you, Larry? Yep. Yeah. I okay. So, uh, I mean, we've had... Uh, you know, one thing I noticed, especially when gold went parabolic a few weeks ago before, you know, up, you know, 90 bucks on the week, right. that the GDX was, uh, and uh, Newmont was unchanged on the week with the physical metal and silver and gold going parabolic. Um, so they were underperforming uh, the metal. Right. I'm wondering, um, with the recent sell-off that we've had, um, you still holding those? I'm I'm still holding it, and I bought some last week, just yeah, over that. forty dollars. Okay. Yeah, when so so I'm still long here. When it pulled back last week, I bought okay. some. I didn't buy this exact low. I'm pretty sure by looking at the chart, I bought this little bar here. So what what happens in a pullback? Once they start to pull back, I don't I don't try to buy into the pullback. I wait till it stops going down, then starts to move back in the other direction. But yeah, I'm I'm still long here. It's still, if you look at the chart, it's still in a, in a pretty strong uptrend. And you know, they could get me. I could be wrong. But what I won't do is if it starts to head south, I'm not going to keep buying it on the way down here, and then eventually I get stopped out. If it okay, goes so south, but, yeah, all right. So where where thing, you're wrong under the red moving average at uh, 38, or uh, if it closes got, back. Off the top of my head, my stop. So my original position is thirty dollars and fifty-five cents. Yeah. And then I bought some more. So off the top of my head, my stop is a high thirty-four, somewhere under here. Okay. All right. Um, anything happening? Um, one of the weakest performers or non-participants has been in. Is still avoiding energy. Yeah. Yeah, energy. You know, there's only one energy chart that's on my screen, so I don't. I don't have a position here, but I put this on the buy list about a, a week or so ago when I came over the 200-day moving average. So Halliburton okay. is the only. This is a strong chart. Yeah. If if you and, and you know once again someone could say, well, like you said, you know, it's up 300%, whatever the number is. But by the same token, so if I can put money into Halliburton today, if it just gets back to the 2020 highs, that's a 50% move. Now, if we take a look longer term where Halliburton's been, so, you know, there you could look at the chart and say, wow, it's up, you know, fourfold. By the same token, I could say, you know, it, it could go up 100%. Right. You know what I mean? If, yeah, if now I know how, how you also justify it. You go to your telescope because, yeah. you know, yeah, your Big telescope, picture. yeah, so it shows, oh, yeah, it's tripled, but. Now it's performing and is, you know, just for it to rally halfway back would be a huge winner. Yeah. Uh, I'm, one, I'm wondering with the blip we had in yields yeah. last week, if mm -hmm. uh, some of the interest sensitive sectors are showing weariness. Uh, I, I know the housing uh, stocks have still been on fire. So they're, they're, on, they're on fire. You know, this blip, did catch my attention. So, so 50 basis points on the 10 year, that's been a key level. So when they had the, the reaction right. sell off in March, it held 50, it held 50. And this blip did catch my attention because it made the dollar spike and, and, you know, it took gold and silver down with it, but it, it's starting to come back in the range, but where I'm, I'm really focused. It's like a, a barbell. So I'm focused in the higher beta stuff. So I'm in, I'm in tech. 
but I'm also in cyclicals, but I'm avoiding uh, REITs, utilities, and the lower beta, so pharmaceuticals and things like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm positioned for an economic recovery with the okay. higher beta positions. And if that and if that happens, uh, yields could go to like your green line. I'm looking for about 120. Uh, you think that would upset the apple cart because uh, that would almost be in in, a fourfold increase from 50 basis points uh, to say 120. Uh, oh, about three times. Is that going to have any impact on valuation models? Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah, if, Would that be if what triggers a correction, Larry? Because, you know, I was looking for rates to move up with the recovery in the market. And right. what you're showing, that's, you know, old, you know um, old school stuff, right? So um, that didn't happen. Uh, but could it be that with the yield curve steepening a bit and uh, yields beginning to rise, that that might be um, something that takes some of the air out of the balloon? I think that would be the most likely scenario. So I think interest, uh, other than a major healthcare setback, any any sharp move in interest rates or a reversal in the U.S. dollar would would definitely have some type of a spillover effect into the other markets. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to share with us? Yeah. So there's a couple. So in in the uh, cyclical and in the industrial metals. So. Uh, we took a look at Alcoa, another one that I put on the buy list yesterday. So tech resources, and this is another one. Now, these are some mid caps, you know, $6 billion market cap. But if you take a look at the chart on, on tech, it had a nice sideways consolidation yeah. for about three months there. Broke right. out over 12, broke out over the 200-day moving average. So uh, that, another one. So these, these are more volatile ideas. So people have to understand the volatility. But Cleveland Cliffs is another what one. What do nice. they do? Cleveland Cliffs is in the iron ore business. Okay. So iron right. ore, steel processing. Now it's another one, okay. $2.5 billion market cap. But then I've got, you know, I've got the regular, uh, you know, high, you know, larger caps. So Shopify and someone could look at Shopify and say, well, it's extended and, and it is, but it's been extended pretty much the entire way up. So as yeah. long as these, these mega cap names are holding the 50 day, then, yeah. then I'm going to lean to the long side. So square, we looked at that. Now, some of these that started to break down. So I've never had a position in Fastly, but now this chart is a little more uh, troubling. So this, it had a, a huge move, which I wasn't in any of it. But once they start to break down like this, and it's tested under the 50 days, so really 72.50. But this, this caught my attention because some of the momentum names, Data Dog, was another one that, you know, that's a pretty tough chart right there. You yeah. know, so it had a strong move, but then it started to break below the 50 day. So I'm, I'm really, I'm in Tesla, you know, and I'm, I'm holding into this breakout. And, you know, Tesla is another name, but it continues to look extended. But the 20 day moving average for the most part held the stock. And then yeah. it broke down, uh, had a double low here at 1365. But yeah, so where, that's where I'm at. Large cap tech. But also these the cyclicals, the industrials. I've got Caterpillar, which I think is setting up pretty well if you take a look at the longer term chart. And uh, you know that's where my positioning is right now. Okay, uh, Larry Tentarelli, the man without fear because the man has a plan. Yeah, the only reason that you have fear is because you don't know what you're going to do if things turn against you. And you could tell, uh, you know, Larry's been long in making money, but he's always ready if the market tells him to get out of the way and it won't be at the top for getting out on longs and he won't be long from the bottom. And all the things that um, amateurs think about and hold them back He's overcome by having, a, a, you know, something that suits his personality. You know, Larry, I've interviewed Jack Schwager, uh, author of Market Wizards. And his, I said, what's the most important advice you could give to a trader? And he said, find a trading style that fits your personality. And I could tell that you have, you know, found something that you're comfortable with that's working for you. And that's how you could do this without 
worrying about every tick and one day doesn't make a market, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, I'm getting something. Forex scale, top six tech stocks holding up the market. Oh yeah, uh, Forex scale sent me an article, the, you know, the concentration in the NASDAQ. But you know, Forex scale, you know, uh, look at what Larry's shown you. Well, take a look uh, at this for a yeah. second. Yeah. Do we have a minute? Yeah, we have time. So here's, this is genomics, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So here's home construction. So if we yeah. take a look at trucking, so here is wow. trucking stocks, right? Then you can take yeah. a look at healthcare. So here's healthcare. Every, uh, take a look at everything. Yeah. I mean, basically, you know, it, huh? it's a it, consumer discretionary. If you take a look. So when people say, you know, there's consumer discretionary now, here's consumer staples. So when, when people say it's a narrow market, that really doesn't, if you look at the charts, it really doesn't play out that way. You know, so yeah, if you, look, great if you point. look in industrials, you know, here's Cummins, here's Fast and all. So, I mean, you can, you can pick an industry and, you know, Fast and all, they make uh, industrial supplies and it looks like the NVIDIA chart. You know, so they're, they're right. under the, uh, when you've got semiconductors, home construction, uh, trucking and all these economically sensitive sectors at new highs. There, there's a lot more than just Apple that's, that's holding this market up. What a great point, Larry. What a great way to wrap it. That's a, that's a teaching moment. I, I've seen that too. And, uh, you know, that uh, under the scenes, uh, you know, I, you, you watch some of the programs and people go, well, how come you haven't been in Salesforce? And, or how come you haven't been in Tesla and people could show other shares yeah. that have done so well, you can't own everything. Yeah. There's trucking. I mean, what, what's more basic than, than trucking, right? Trucking yeah. is at new all time high. So there, there is, I could name 20 sectors if I had time that are in the upper right hand corner of the screen and they're not tech. Okay. Larry, why don't you show it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lumber. Yeah. Lumber's at new all time highs. Uh, there's a, I guess some home builders can't get any wood to yeah. build. Lum lumber yeah. Lumber's at high. Now keep in mind this, obviously the super low interest rates play the part with that. But I mean, they're yeah. all, you know, if you take a look at Best Buy, which is in consumer discretionary, yeah. I mean, it's just right now. It's across, Now here's the thing. It, it'll come to an end at one time. You, you know, I don't know when that is, but you know, this for week. now the, the argument that it, you know, it, it's Amazon and Tesla is just not working. That's not it. Well, I think we're marking at least a high for a correction. Um, you know, uh, Oh, there'll be a point. correction at some point yeah. too, for sure. Well, I'm yeah, giving you the point. Be. It started yesterday. Could be. Okay. Anyway, be. I'm on record and uh, I've worn a clown hat before because <laughs> I could be wrong. Yeah, but I got you. <laughs> anyway, Larry, uh, what's the best way for people to follow your work and what you're doing? Uh, so the best way if they want to follow me on Twitter, it's at LMT978. And then if they want to go to the website, it's bluechipdaily. Dot com. It's the blue chip daily trend report and uh, they can go on to 2020 best trade alerts. So what I do is I screenshot. We've got a lot of nice, not only for myself, you know, I've got Lavongo that's up about 80%, but even for subscribers every day, I post a daily best technical idea and we've had, and it, it's not just tech, you know, it, it's industrials, it's uh, yeah. pharmaceutical, it's wherever, wherever the charts go, that's where I try to Reasonable uh, subscription price, in my opinion, too. So, Larry, uh, you're a pro, and um, I've interviewed a lot of people. I could tell that you, your demeanor uh, shows that, you know, you've been doing this for a while, and uh, you, you have the discipline. You're not um, emotional, and uh, I really appreciate you bringing in your bullish viewpoints. gives me some balance. So um, I hope that things continue to work, you and your family remain untouched uh, from COVID. And when we get back together after the elections, uh, whether the, in November, they should be over sometime in November, don't you think? Sure. Yeah. I mean, this first time we've ever going to see a contested election if the uh, incumbent win, uh, loses, because he's already saying that there's no way he could lose unless it's fixed. So that's going to be a 
possible constitutional crisis here. I, I'm, I'm interested in how the market's going to react uh, when America can't have a smooth, peaceful transition of power. I'm a little concerned about that. You know, and that's, and the one thing that you said, you know, I, I go into every day. So the VIX is still at 22, which is historically high. There still is, a, obviously, the health care crisis is going on, and we're going into an election. So even though I'm long all these, you know, higher beta names, I do know that at, at any point the market can start to turn down. So I always have my, my eye on the exit signal because I know that nothing goes on forever. So I, I want to stay long as long as the trend is working. But, yeah, I mean, volatility could pick up for, you know, any reason. Yeah. And uh, that's a falling wedge. It's kind of a bullish formation. The one comment I have on this fixed chart is the market has made new highs, but the gap that we left on the VIX uh, uh, has not been filled. It's at 18. And that's right. kind of constructive. I would have thought with the market at new highs, we would have filled that gap. So I like the look of the VIX chart right here. Never it, sell a sleeping market, right? It's it's definitely in a downtrend right now. So as long as they can keep, you know, I think as long as the liquidity, that that's the big thing. And we spoke about this the last time. As long as the liquidity is, is primed, then at least there's some type of a floor that's out there. If, if the Fed came out, and I don't think they're going to take back this QE anytime soon, no. but I, I think that's what the market is going to look at too. Okay, Larry. Well, Thank you for coming in and uh, showing your views and uh, where you have skin in the game on all these different issues and edifying the face community. I appreciate it. We Dale, all I, I always appreciate you having me on. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll get to together in November, okay? Excellent. Sounds good. I'll Thank send you. you a DM. All right, everyone, that's, that's a wrap. Good hunting the rest of the day. We'll see you on to wrap it up tomorrow, TGIF. And uh, remember, don't just count your pips or your shares or your coins or your sardine cans and tuna that you went up and stocked up on and all your rolls of toilet paper that you thought you'd run out of. So, you know, don't just count your toilet paper rolls, count your blessings. You're welcome. I'll see you guys. We'll wrap it up tomorrow. Adios.